In this video, we're going to use our web form to search for a single row in our MySQL database. So here we have the value phone, and I want to search in my database for a row that has a name equal to phone. I'm going to go ahead and hit search. As you can see here, we've retrieved the row and we've pulled the data from every one of the fields. Now, if we go over to our MySQL workbench, uh, the table we're using, we're just calling it products. We have an ID field, ID products, name, price, and description. Uh, the ID products is going to be our primary key. It's going to be not null and auto increment. Uh, name is just going to be 45 characters. It's also going to be unique. Uh, price can be up to 10 digits wide, but since we're dealing with dollars and cents, we also want to make sure we have two decimal places as well. And the description can be a little bit longer. It can be up to 100 characters. Now, just a reminder, you do need to pull in a driver. Um, SQL is not completely self-contained, say for instance, like FM, you know, the Fump package is, being that this is full of interfaces and structs that help you utilize a particular driver much easier. It doesn't actually have the driver. So there's many, many different data, many databases with many different sets of drivers and many different people creating different sets of drivers for those databases. So uh, this one way to go just knows like, hey, we need this from an outside source because SQL doesn't have it all. Um, it you wouldn't want this package being updated every single time they're updating any of those drivers because there's just too many of them for that. Uh, anyway, so we're saying, hey, we do need this information, but you're not going to see that MySQL uh, data type or function being used in this main.go file. So we're creating an alias and we're using underscore just to throw that alias away. But the SQL package will most definitely need that driver, especially when it runs sql.open. Um, anyway, we've created our product struct with an ID, fi ID field name, price, and description. And of course, we're connecting and we're returning our sql.db, uh, I'm sorry, pointer to sql.db data type. And that data type we're going to use to help us run a bunch of different, um, different methods. And just remember, you do need to close this. There, um, it's going to be handling a pool of connections, and we got to make sure we, hand, we release those resources when we're done with them. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and let's take a look at that real quick. So I'm at the SQL package. Um, very often people see a lot of different functions on here, a lot of different methods, and it can be a little bit hard trying to figure out where do I start if I wanted to make a select statement for a single row, if I want to select several rows, or maybe I want to insert something, delete something, update something, you know, where do I start? Uh, just kind of in short, you got to kind of look at what you're returning. So let's say if you want to just a single row, you, you know, using the method, you know, DB query row would be a good one. It notice it'll just return one row, but if you wanted to return several rows, you might you would probably want to use query rows. So typically these are going to be run with select statements. Um, if you were going to use you know an insert statement, a delete statement, or an update uh, statement, you'd probably you would want to use the prepare function. And that's going to return a statement. And we'll go that statement object. And we'll go over some of this more as we go into the other queries later down the road. So this statement data type is going to have all these different uh, methods on it. So you can use the execute, say if you wanted to insert something new, you could create your statement and then you could run dot execute, you know, exec, and that would return a result whether it you know, was successful or not. Um, if you wanted to insert, update, delete, whatever you want to do, you could use that. And even if you wanted to create a statement uh, or you know, just a select statement, you could do that as well 
for Corey and Corey Row. So basically, you could you wanted to create a the statement data type for all of your queries. Maybe that might be simpler. Um, and this one, I'm going to go ahead and use DB uh, Corey Row for pulling a single though. Um, anyway, and as you can see, uh, those data types that we're returning a row, you know, an error, and it has a scan method. So that way, you can pull those fields out of that return row. And we have our rows data type, which we won't be covering too much today, but it has things like next. So that way, when you pull several rows, you can iterate through that, pulling that data out. Um, anyway, let's go back to our, our code. So at slash product search, we have the product search handler. If we go down to this handler, basically if it is a get request. We just want to serve the product search page. We don't want to do anything else. And if I go to that page, as you can see, we we're just showing the form when it was a get request. Now, when you hit the submit button, it's going to send out a post request at the same address. And that's when you know it would not be equal to get. And then this wouldn't be the end of our code. We'd get to proceed on to the rest of our code. And if you notice, we couldn't actually see, you know, the ID, you know, semicolon, name, semicolon, because we have this if statement in our template. So if this has a value, you will go ahead and see this stuff here. If, if it doesn't have a value, this equates to false, and you don't, get, you don't see anything here. So that's why if we go back. I just hit enter you won't see it then because that's just a get request but I hit the search button it's going to go to the same address but it's going to be posts and a different line of code is going to be executed so we'll get that to show up okay so um of course, we need to parse our form. We've created our product, or our P variable, which is a type product, which has those four fields. Um, we're going to go ahead and grab that particular field, which is has the name product name, which we're getting. Here's our form. Product name is right there. So that's how we're pulling in that, uh, that particular input from our form. And then we have our statement here. And notice I'm putting in a question mark. So when I'm ready to run this particular statement, I'm going to use db.queryRow, which remember just returns one row. And that's what I'm looking for. So I'm just looking for one thing. Um, if you're looking for one, you want to make sure you only return one thing, uh, primary key or just any, any kind of column that is unique. Uh, you would want to search across one of those to make sure you just get one field. But anyway, so we got our statement here, which has this question mark. And this question mark is going to be replaced with this name variable, which we pulled in from our input on our form up here. So this is much handier than, say, creating my statement and concatenating it, concatenating it together you know, and then I would just, you know, I just wouldn't have, I wouldn't have that part there. But anyway, pretty handy. Um, you want to, but yeah, it just makes it real simple. So you can just input what you're inputting. If you want to input several things, you can actually do that as well. Um, as you can see, you know, it's a variadic function. Um, anyway, this is going to return our row and we need to be able to get those fields out of that returned row. And that's where row.scan, that method comes into play. So we're looking, this is variadic as well, so it's as many different things as we have in there. We're looking for destinations. So I'm gonna say, hey, at this memory address, I want the first field. At this memory address, I want the second field, the third field, and the fourth field. Now notice I have these in order like they are in my database. 
you know, if I put price, you know, in the front, well, we would have an issue because it's going to try and put the ID or the, you know, inside that price uh, field on my struct. So make sure you have these in line. And of course, if we have an error, we want to go ahead. It's, you know, if it's not nil, we want to go ahead and panic. And then we'll go ahead and run it. So, you know, basically just make sure, you know, your select statement, your statement is correct and you pick the correct statement for the job. Um, like I said, for a row returns one row. So if I'm looking for a, something with, well, across the lines of its primary key, you know, for that type of select, that would be great. Um, another thing I want to mention up here is never throw away this db.open because you need to make sure you release those resources or else you're, you know, there's a whole pool of connections and you're just going to be tying stuff up. Um, Golang is not going to close it for you because you're interacting with an outside source, and, you know, which is a database, an outside code base. So you need to say, hey, I'm done with those resources. And that's where this defer db.close. Otherwise, eventually you're just going to run out of connections. You're going to be wondering why things are running slow. Um, But anyway, in short, you know, we're grabbing it from the value we needed from our web form. We're you know, we have our statement. We're not creating a statement object. We're just creating a string which holds our our you know, our statement that we're going to run. And then we pass that in, and then we just need to say, "Hey, wherever you find that question mark, replace that with our variable." It's going to return our row. And then we can scan that row, get every different field out, and yes, that has to be in order, and make sure, yes, you say put the ampersand in front, because yes, we need to know the, the destination of it. We need to know its memory address. So at this memory address, put the you know, put the ID, this memory address, put the name, you know, price and description. But anyway, um, I hope that was helpful. Uh, in the future, we're going to go ahead and take a look at pulling multiple rows as well as you know, insert, uh, update, and delete statements as well. All right, I'll see you in the next one.